Hard Knock TV, Face Mob in the building. Current state of hip hop. I love Kendrick Lamar. Um, what else you want me to say? I feel like we losing it. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the people that are in control of what hip hop does is so fucking white and so fucking Jewish until they don't give a fuck about what the culture and the craft and what the what it really is about. I don't know if the motherfucker is trying to really uh let me say this shit right. Cause this, I want this to be as offensive as I can fucking make it for th these old ass uh, punks that's running these record labels. You know, that's, that's the, in the powerful positions to to dictate what the black community hears and listens to. You know what I mean? I, I, I fucking hate that shit. Like that shit pisses me off. Like there's no fucking way that you can tell me it's the, that that it's not a conspiracy against the blacks in hip hop because you put out fucking records that make us look stupid you make us look dumb you brainwash a generation you brainwash a gener generation of hip hoppers with this fucking crud i and then when 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 these other rappers come out splitting it down the middle these other rappers shit sound like wow wow they they all you y'all are great Y'all look stupid. Y'all look great. Y'all look stupid. Y'all look great. And then, you know, motherfuckers start going over here and then pretty soon, you know, hip hop is white now. I'm from the ghetto, so I'm used to that. Look on your motherfucking map and find Texas and see where used to that. It's on the borderline of hard times. And it's seldom that you hear niggas breaking and giving God time. That's why I asked my mind to pray for me. Because I know that even I got to die and he got a day for me. And every morning I wake up, I'm kind of glad to be alive. Because thousands of my homeboys die. You've seen it from an artist side, and you're also the president at Def Jam South, so you've seen it from both sides. Do you have any advice for upcoming artists as far as like... Man, all, all, all I can say to, to the upcoming artists, man, the advice that I have for them is to, to respect the craft, uphold the integrity of the, the craft, man. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't let these people um, uh, dictate, on, dictate what we hear, you know, or dictate what we, we see, you know, in hip-hop. You know, it's our culture, like, stay the fuck out of it. You know what I mean? Like this is our shit, and I I just feel fucked up when a um, a old ass seventy five year old dude that ain't never been to the to the neighborhood to that you know to embrace this culture or ever to try to dictate what's hot, you know, and what's not. Like I don't that like that's the that's 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 what I want the youngsters to do, man. Protect the integrity of the craft. That way we can maintain, you know, where it's supposed to be. Because without that, you know, like I say, in 25 years, you know, hip hop will have a new face and a new hero. And, you know, like rock and roll got a new face and a new hero. You feel me? Like, like, let's save and preserve this shit. Otherwise, Elvis gonna be, you know, the face on hip hop. <laughs> Right. Seriously. Well, that's connected to something you wrote on, on Twitter not, not too long ago. That was uh, hip hop history rewritten like rock and roll history was, and we get to watch it helplessly and hopelessly. Is that what you're, that's what you're talking about? Watch it. Watch that shit. You saw that? I'm glad you saw that shit because that shit means every fucking thing, man. It really does. You know, you you saw hip hop. Well, you didn't see you didn't see rock and roll get changed because you wasn't here and I wasn't here. But the only reason why I know that it's happening like that is because I got people that's what, that was in the music business back then. Johnny Nash is my cousin. You know, and all my aunt, bands and shit, bands and bands and bands I grew up in. And they said that, you know, rock and roll used to be, that was some shit that uh, fucking um, Chuck Berry came up with. You know, and the, the, the rock and rollers don't know who the fuck Chuck Berry is now. You know, the blues was, the blues was, was Robert Johnson and, and fucking, uh, you know, uh, Eddie's son House. You know what I'm saying? Now, now the blues is fucking Eric Clapton. You know, Mick Jagger. You know what I'm saying? That's not the fucking blues, B. You feel me? 
Like hip hop is gonna be the same thing. To see a a, a, a black rock band like um who the fuck was this man? Man, who in the fuck is this fucking group, man? Wishbone? Not Wishbone, but it was another one, though. What, what year are you talking about? Oh, 90s. Living Color? Who? Living Color? Living fucking color. Living fucking color. Find me another, find me another black rock band. Fishbone, most deaf try to do a rock band. The Find me another rock band, seriously. Yeah. If the Roots wanted to do a rock album, they could do it right. But they still are very much a hip hop. People think it was hip hop. Yeah, I'm talking about rock. Like I'm like talking rock about fucking, I'm talking about fucking, uh, uh, uh. The closest thing I can think of is a Rage Against Machine, which is black. Or four that's black. not black. It's not black, man. It's half Mexican, half black. Hootie and the Blowfish? Hootie is not, no. Hootie, Hootie is Hootie black, but the Blowfish white. <laughs> it's gonna be some stuff you're gonna see that's gonna make it hard to smile in the future. But through whatever you see, through all the rain and the pain, you gotta keep your sense of humor. You gotta be able to smile through all this bullshit. Remember that. Um, Pac. You knew Pac for, for a while. I know, I've, I've been knowing Pac since 1992, 1991. Um, now, I've heard you say that, that there was two sides of Pac. There was Road Pac and uh, Studio Pac. Can you maybe tell us a, a story of, of the, the difference between a Studio Pac and... and pa studio Pac was a hard, he was working his ass off. You know, he, he'd go out, man, this whole table would be just full of shit. Full of drink and wine and chicken and fucking greens and macaroni and shit. You know, he was a workhorse though, man. You know, he had, he, you know, we all had a fucking buffet out or whatever, you know, that he, 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 he put us down with or whatever, but he was a fucking workhorse, man. That's why he got albums coming out, you know, almost 20 years after his death, he still got fucking songs that ain't been heard. You feel me? He worked his ass off. Feel me? Now on the road with Pac, he was a totally different animal. Well, I don't, I don't know. Pac was always kind of wild, though. You know, Pac didn't give a fuck. He was dead in your face. Fuck it. If you didn't like it, fuck it. Fuck it. Beat me up and shut me up. You know what I'm saying? That's what Pac was to me. On especially on that fucking road, man. Right before I go on stage, when Pac would, oh, Pac used to open up for me. We was on a tour. And man, Pac would fucking have a fight and they be br bringing out guns and shit in the crowd would believe and I wouldn't get my fucking money. And I was like, God damn it, man, fuck. So I started fixing his ass. I started going first. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was them day. I missed that dude, man. It's a lot of shit that like, Pac would have rolled on a whole lot of shit. Like it was just, you know, shit, fucking uh, uh, Mitt Romney. He would have rolled on Mitt Romney's oh, yeah. ass. Like, Pac would have rolled on his ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that fucking, that fucking Pac was lawless. He didn't give a fuck, man. He would have rolled on all the motherfuckers. I, I felt like right when he passed away, he was on that, that, that verge yeah, of where he was, he was, yeah, he, he got the, everybody he up. wanted, he's and then he was gonna politicize everybody. everybody. He, was finna, he was finna fuck the shit up. Yeah. You know what I mean? He got the, he got the, the, the attention of the masses, and he was getting ready to drop a whole bunch of fucking knowledge that a lot of people had no idea was was really going on, you know what I mean? And um, I miss that dude, man. He would have rolled on a lot of shit. Um, can you talk a little bit about Smile? I, I've heard different stories of how the, the, the song came about. Well, the night before that song, like, it was rolling, like, I, my man was standing outside on Sunset, and uh, Pac seen him and busted U-turn. He was in the car with Eddie Griffin. So he walked across to the Hilton and met him with Pac and Griff. And he had a few drinks or whatever. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna come pick you up. You know, and, uh, and uh, I'm gonna come pick you up and do this record. And I'm like, cool. So shit, I ain't here for Pac for a minute. Like we had left and moved to the, um, we moved to the fucking, uh, the Oakwood, uh, right on Barham. 
That motherfucker pulled up, man. He had a black Hummer, dude. With all kind of sirens and fucking loudspeakers and shit, man. And he pulls up, man. And he started talking loud on that fucking loudspeaker. Talking about, Brad Jordan, come out with your hands up. I'm, I'm high. You know, smoking that good ass LA. We ain't had that shit. So I'm fucking, oh, man, what the fuck did I do? You know? And then uh, the home was like, man, don't even trip, man. We got you, bro. He was like, white people, don't be alarmed. I say, man, this motherfucker. We go out with my partner, uh, my cousin go out on the back. He said, man, that's Pac, man. Man, I go downstairs, man, and um, he's in his black commando type of fucking Hummer. And I'm not going to go with him no fucking way because I know he can't drive. I know Pac can't drive. And I don't know who gave him cars to drive. You know, but he was like, yeah, man, let's go to the studio. And blah, 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 blah. You know, Pac was always fucking on fire, man. And um, we went to the studio, man, and we jammed. That was the last time I seen the homie, man. Yeah. And every time Pac would get into some shit, man, I'd be like right there. You know what I mean? A few blocks away or something. When he got shot in New York, he was at the fucking uh, Quad Studios. And I was a couple of blocks away at the Double Tree on the top, you know what I mean? And I know that if I would have knew that Pac was in trouble, like we would have both been shot. All them motherfuckers would have been dead. You know what I mean? We was thick and thin. You know, it, it, we had a whole fucking, everybody was thick and thin. Fucking MC Breed to uh, Doc, Richie Rich, uh, who am I missing? Spice One, Short, we was all like, we was them underdog rappers, you feel me? Like, we was the underground rappers. Wasn't nobody really down with us. We was down with each other, though. You feel me? Like, that's, that's how I seen that shit. <laughs>